Hey, welcome back to the Mark Mosey Show. And I thought we'd do something kind of interesting and new for the big UCF game coming up on Friday night at the Bounce House against Louisville. I got to say that correctly. I have two fine gentlemen who cover UCF football. They do a great job. First, Eric Lopez with Black and Gold Banneret. Eric, how are you doing today? I am doing good. This is like a, a special moment here, I feel, a historic on the Mark Moses Show. Yes, it is. And Trace Trelko, who does a great job with the Sons of UCF. Trace, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Good to see you, Mark, and good to be reunited with Elo. And Eric and I, we joke, we love your videos where you pop up to preview your show. Eric, we've made it. We're on screen with Trace. It's finally happened. <laughs> walk and talk, baby. <laughs> Elo has been in a walk and talk I have. Oh. before. Oh, he has. At um, a softball facility. It was a good trade-off. I gave Trace the tour of the facilities there, walk in the outfield, and then return. I got to be on walk and talk. I think it's a fair deal. I like it. Let's start with Eric. Coming off the win last week against South Carolina State, how excited are you for this game? Well, I think you're always excited when a football game is coming. I mean, you don't have too many of these. You have 12 in a regular season. And obviously, when the schedule came out, Louisville, what happened last year with UCF losing, I mean, certainly there's the excitement. Uh, but there's also some apprehension. I mean, I think there were some positives from last week, but I think there's some questions still. What about the offensive line? The special teams was brutal. Uh, and I think John Rice Plumley. what is his ceiling? So uh, I think there's excitement to maybe learn more about this team and, you know, to see if they maybe improve on some areas of concern. Trace, you've been going to the press conferences and you do a great job as well doing that, you know, coach, players, what has been the feeling so far this week heading into Friday? I think it's interesting that uh, typically it's just one game at a time, but they sort of have this one circled. They even mentioned it, that this is a game of some priority to them. And as we've talked about all four of the losses a season ago, those teams come to the bounce house and uh, you know, they've also tried to downplay Louisville's opening game loss at Syracuse, that that may be not the real Louisville, that we're going to get to see the real Louisville. So that begs the question, would you have rather they gone to Syracuse and got the win or, or getting kicked like they did a 31-7 loss at Syracuse in which they didn't seem to perform on either side of the ball. So they come in 0-1 and they're going to be fired up to, to get a win in Orlando for sure. Eric, here's the question then, and it's something we've hammered for nine straight months heading into Friday. Is this a revenge game for UCF after what happened last year? Yes, it is a revenge game. Uh, you know, as Trace mentioned, they have not really uh, hide from that. Uh, there's no question. I mean, you could argue that UCF season last year was derailed in Louisville and that dramatic loss in the game where Dylan Gabriel ironically got hurt on the last play and would never see wear a black and gold jersey again. So absolutely, this is revenge. This is a big game for Travis Williams, in my opinion, because UCF got shredded by Louisville last year. Did they learn from that? Is this defense as good as they say they are? I think we get some answers this Friday against Louisville. Okay, we'll go to Trace then. With as many players that had come in via the transfer portal, I really look at the South Carolina State game as a preseason game, right? You saw how long Plumley, Isaiah Bowser, and others were in that game into the fourth quarter. So I think with the influx of people that UCF needed that game, you asked about revenge. Certainly they want to avenge that loss. As Eric pointed out, the season turned out fine. You know, nine and four, you maybe don't get to the Gasparilla Bowl, get that big signature win against the Gators without everything that happened but they would like to return the favor on Louisville. And we're going to get to see what they're made of, right? Malik Cunningham is a better quarterback yes. than what UCF faced against South Carolina State. No disrespect uh, to South Carolina State, but that talent matchup was uh, was one-sided in UCF's favor. So how much were they challenged? And, uh, uh, you know, the areas of concern coming out of game one or even going into game one still need to be tested. What are we going to see from the linebackers? Can they get uh, contain Malik Cunningham? What are we going to see week one to week two, that coaching cliche, the progress you make from week one to week two? What do we see on the offensive line? What decisions did John Rice Plumley make? And can they more effectively run the ball with Isaiah Bowser? I don't know if you look at the gaudy stats of that game, but look at the per carry average of Isaiah Bowser. He had some 20 carries, 20 plus carries, 70 some yards. So he had to grind for the yards that he had. And as Eric mentioned, the quote, special teams cannot have those sorts of blunders or in a close game, you leave with a loss like they did at Navy last year. All right. I'm going to give a shout out to Eric Lopez, where I was listening to your post game show. 
I did it on Friday morning. All right. I just want to clarify this. I was driving on 95. I listened to your post. Beautiful. Yeah. So you guys were breaking this down about the quarterback position, running the football with Plumlee. And I'm looking at the stats, what 15 for 86 and a touchdown through four touchdowns as well. But do you want Plumlee and trace? You'll do the follow-up to this, but Eric will answer first. Do you want your quarterback running for 85 yards or more per game in this offense? Not against South Carolina State. That was the thing that baffled me a little bit. I don't know if it baffled you, Trace. The fact that you're using him that much, and they use Bowser a lot in the South Carolina State game. I keep hearing about how we have all this depth at the running back position, and yet, in a, in a, in a, and I agree with Trace, I think it's a preseason game. It's a, a scrimmage. I call it a scrimmage just to kind of poke fun at the matchups against FCS schools. You're only using Plumlee, Bowser, and Richardson mainly in your running game. I was really baffled by that. Gus Malzahn said in the post game it was because they wanted to get some work in. They didn't feel they were clicking on all sides. I get all that, but I'm going to tell you something. I just don't believe that Plumlee can last a season running that way. If you're going to use him like that in every game, I just don't believe he has the physique to last like a Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow could last because he was so big. You know this, Mark, covering him big and physical. I don't think John Rice is that capable of doing that for a full season. And I think one of the interesting things will be, can he throw the football and move the chains on third downs? You look at Jordan Travis. I compare him to, can he get to that level? Look at what Jordan Travis did against LSU, moving the chains on third downs and how much he's improved since he walked on campus at FSU. Remember a year ago, everybody's clamoring for Mackenzie Milton to play there. Turns out Jordan Travis was the better quarterback for that team. I think Plumlee's the best quarterback for this UCF team because of the issues they have in the offensive line. But he has to make better decisions as far as throwing the football, checking down, and not running so much because I think some of that was just running on instincts because I don't think he'll last a whole year. Trace, your thoughts as well. But I think that's who he is. And I think that's why Gus Malzahn wanted him in at quarterback to extend plays with his legs. And he didn't see that same thing in Mikey Keene. Uh, so I think you got to let John Rice Plumley be himself. However, I agree. You don't want to take any unnecessary hits any more than you have to. And he certainly ran the ball in some spots where I would have rather he not, uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, deep running back court, didn't see many of those guys. Uh, maybe that's just the, uh, the, the first game look that they, they wanted to put on film for Louisville. Uh, on the Sons of UCF, we have talked with uh, opponents uh, and the Big 12 members of the media that cover those teams. And the gentleman from TCU talked about the step up. UCF fans, prepare yourself for the step up to the Big 12, uh, that it's going to be harder than you expect. And I think you see that along the lines. And, and, th and that game last year in Louisville, UCF got beat up smash the physicality in that game uh they they took punch after punch and i don't think they were expecting quite those punches right you get used to the flow and the tempo and, and accustomed to the temples and the two lanes and then louisville smashed them and and that was a question i asked in the uh media availability earlier in the week about that physicality now the guys that were on that in that game and on that team last year know what to expect from louisville that's something i'm looking for is uh what what, what kind of hits these guys are going to take because i think the louisville guys might hit Plumlee harder than the South Carolina state guys. So, uh, okay. It's cliche question time. And we're here at trace Trelco with sons of UCF and Eric Lopez with black and gold banner at we'll start with trace keys to victory. It's like we're on the pregame show. It's cliche. What are your keys to the victory for UCF on Friday night? Defensively. Can they contain Malik Cunningham quarterback, talented quarterback from Louisville far more effectively than they did last year. Uh, we saw what Syracuse was able to do. We had a pedestrian game against Syracuse. They lose 31-7 on the road. Can UCF contain Malik Cunningham on defense? And then offensively, better decision-making from John Rice Plumley. I think some of the balls that he completed uh, may be a little more difficult against Louisville. And I think they're going to hit hard. I think they're going to get smashed. So do we see progress along the offensive line? And I'll tell you what, this is a fan base and the coaches can say what they want when they go before the, the mics, but I'm not sure that collectively everybody has a great deal of confidence in the special teams and in place kicker Daniel Obarski. Do you want to get into a shootout? Do you want to be up in the 30s, 40s again? And do you want to be on the right side of that? I don't know. And you certainly don't want a game to come down to a very important field goal. So those are the three things I'm looking for in the game. Eric, you as well. Well, I agree with Trace with most of what he said there. I think the, you know, can they contain Cunningham? They did not last year. He was the entire Louisville offense. 
I, can UCF dominate the line of scrimmage? Louisville struggled in the line of scrimmage against Syracuse. Uh, I want to see UCF's offensive line push somebody around. They didn't really push South Carolina State around. That, that was concerning to me. Uh, and I think you're right. I mean, a close game. I'll be curious how Gus, I wonder, because I agree with Trace. I, I think the special teams is a big concern. I think it could cost them a game if they don't improve their Navy. Navy, a Navy <laughs> type game. Can, does Gus go for it more often on fourth downs because of that? That's something I'm kind of be watching for. Do you see Gus being more aggressive or we're like, whoa, he's going for it on fourth down at the 35 or at the 30 or whatever? I'm curious to see that. And I think we're going to learn a lot about Plumlee. Uh, again, this is an athletic defense he's going to face. You're not just going to be able to run all over them uh, like South Carolina State. So I'll be curious to see how UCF, the big stat, third down. Who can get off the field? Can Louisville get UCF off the field? Can UCF get Louisville off the field? Who can wear any, somebody down in this game? I think will play a big factor in this. This is a big game for both sides. For Louisville, I think Scott Satterfield is in big trouble here. He's in trouble. He The fans are not happy with him. They need a win here. They play Florida State the following Friday. They could dig themselves a hole. Here's a stat for both of you. UCF could end up playing four teams on their schedule that end up firing their coaches this season. <laughs> Louisville's in the hot seat. Jeff Collins is definitely in the hot seat at Georgia Tech. I don't think he's going to survive. South Florida, after that performance against BYU, I don't think Jeff Scott's safe there at all. Then Navy lost to Delaware at home. That program has been in decline. I can't imagine Ken Niamatolo survives that. And, heck, I'll even throw in FAU. If Willie Taggart doesn't get FAU to a bowl game at least, he may not be safe. So the schedule's made there for UCF, but do, can they hide the, the weaknesses and improve enough to take advantage of this schedule. Let's end with this here. Here are my, my gut reaction is we're heading into Friday. I don't know what's going to happen into this game until we get there to kick off. I know the, and I want your thoughts. I feel like that place is the bounce house is going to be electric. I think people have been waiting nine months for this. They are ready to start screaming and cheering for UCF. But like what you said, I got to see what Louisville's quarterback can do in this pressure situation. I got to see what Plumlee have to do. That's my gut right now. I don't know what's going to happen, and I got to see how this game plays out in the first quarter. We'll start with you, Eric. Do you feel that way as well? Yes. I think we got to learn about both quarterbacks. What did UCF learn against Malik Cunningham from last year to this year? I think the crowd – I think, Trace, you would agree with me. I think this is the game the UCF fans have scheduled as far as the home slate is concerned, right? This is the mark. I mean, I've talked to so many people that are planning to come up for this game – I know yeah. you've got big – I mean, so I think this is the marquee home game. I mean, with due respect to the American Conference, nobody's fired up for SMU coming to town, even though I think SMU might be the best team on the schedule that UCF has. But the fan base, there's something about that Louisville, the brand, whatever you want to call it. This is the game where I think the fans have circled. And this is the game that's going to leave the fans with an impression, one way or the other, at the end of that Friday night. Either like, hey, we're in for a great year, or oh, boy. What is going on? That's going to be the impression at the end of Friday night. You're right. We're not going to know. I don't think we're going to see what Plumlee's made of and then how this defense handles Cunningham. Well, it's Florida in September, and there's already thunderstorms called for in the forecast. So <laughs> well, of course there is bounce house. But if the game gets delayed because of weather or if it is raining, does that hold down some of the looky-loos that plan to come to that game? They need a packed raucous bounce house also ucf played south carolina state on a thursday yeah. louisville went to syracuse on a saturday night so ucf got a little bit more time they haven't had to travel uh they've been in their own beds they they, they you know have had that chance to recover better scout louisville louisville a little bit shortened week i think it's an important game for ucf uh from the perspective of a win all right louisville may not be the greatest but there's still brand name in louisville and maybe UCF on the on the fringes there on the outside creeping into a top 25 position. Maybe they get into that 25th spot or so with a win. But I think a lot of it is the perception. If they get smashed by Louisville a year after they got beat up on the road there, then what progress have you made year to year? And I think it'd be interesting to see what John Rice Plumley does. You know, the turnover, he gets sacked. The, you know, it, we forget with the rest of that play that he runs down the field. Ryan O'Keefe runs down the field. But let's talk about things collapsed on the play and, and, and he loses the ball. 
again, I expect Louisville's line to be more intimidating than South Carolina State. So what happens when he's pressured? We didn't say him make a lot of mistakes, but is this where he gets picked? Is this where he turns the ball over? And those were some concerns going in. This is their real test, and we'll see how they come out of it. But the season, uh, a lot of games, certainly in the American, but from a national perception, this is an important game or UCF with a loss. Nobody's going to care when they go to FAU and Georgia Tech. Uh, nobody's going to care, as Eric pointed out. A lot of coaches uh, may be playing their uh, coach in their last games for these teams this season that UCF faces. So nobody's going to really care. But, hey, you get that win. Then FAU, Georgia Tech. Hey, now you got a good September, and let's open league play. Great stuff. I, I will give you guys the shout out. Eric, how can we check out everything with your great work? Black and gold banneret.com. Uh, check out all the coverage there. Kyle Nash, Andrew Glukoff will be at the game for Louisville on Friday. Uh, we'll have night shift, the post game show that you mentioned. will be live after the game in Louisville. Kyle will check in from the stadium. You can check that out live on the YouTube channel, uh, the Black and Gold Banneret, or on our podcast the following morning, like you did, Mark, on that. So we're looking forward to that. And then I'll be calling the UCF volleyball against Miami. They got a big match Saturday. I'll be doing, I've been doing volleyball and soccer. Trace mentioned the weather. I've had two lightning delays and two soccer <laughs> broadcasts this year. So let's hope we don't have that on football and have a Boise fiasco from last year where, what was it, Trace, three in the morning? <laughs> the game. I've never been at a post game so late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, check me out, Eric Lopez Elo, for all the details there. Uh, Trace, you as well. The, you get the floor. Sons of UCF, Adam and Mike do their podcast. It's dropped uh, already for the week, previewing the game at Louisville and recapping South Carolina State. Find that wherever you get your downloadable content. I come together with Adam and Mike on Thursday, 8 to 9, streaming live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, give a subscription to the Sons of UCF YouTube channel. We have other content available there. Sons of UCF, you can follow them on Twitter. And again, the downloadable content, wherever you get that, give them a follow. Uh, and uh, we're going to be doing a big tailgate so if you're out at the bounce house, we'll be adjacent to the soccer field, not far from the concert stage, 2.30 on. Come meet Adam, Mike, and I. We don't always get together all in the same place, so it's a good opportunity to come out and hang with us and talk about the nights. 2.30. All right. Woo! You, whoa, that's a long day for you, buddy. You better hope the storm stay away there, Trace. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Trace, Eric, thank you so much for your help, and good luck with your coverage on Friday night, all right? All right. Thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure, Mark.